we're going to go ahead and get started. This is a kind of a follow up to what we did on Thursday, our fast trade event. In fact, we're going to go over that very quickly. Some of the things that we talked about in the event uh, so that we can get you up to speed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to show you what our trades actually look like. When I was a struggling trader, it uh, seemed like every event, every webinar that I attended, everything that I what, was trying to learn, people was trying to teach me on static charts, meaning charts that just don't move. You know, they're the, the historic charts with pre-filled with historic data, like what you're seeing on this chart here. You know, all of this is historical data. Um, but what the real decision making happens with the live data that's coming in into the current bar. That was never shown to me when I was trying to learn how to trade. Everything is in hindsight with with what most people do showing those static charts they show a lot of lines and they say well this is what i would do here this is what i would do there and it makes total sense when you're watching it on a webinar but when you sit down to try to actually start trading and and following along it gets a lot harder doesn't it it doesn't seem to make as much sense there's a lot of confusion hindsight is the way that most people tend to trade this stuff or, or teach this stuff well, I'm going to show you what I prefer, and that's what we're going to do today. And that's why we're calling this live trades, because I'm going to show you with real data coming in to the charts how we trade these setups. OK, so first of all, uh, the old disclaimer that, that says this is for educational purposes only. Trading is very risky and you may lose some, all or more than your original investment in trading capital. Only trade with capital that you can afford to lose. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results or your results. Okay, so we're talking about a fast trade, and this is what we do in our trade room every day. We trade very fast, and we do it because there are fewer emotions. Our, our account has lower exposure, meaning we're out of the markets most of the time. When we go in on a trade, we go in quickly, we get our little bite, and we exit, kind of like a piranha, right? We think of ourselves kind of as piranhas. We see a, an opportunity, we go in, we seize that opportunity, and we get out in a hurry before the bigger fish have a chance to, you know, come in and take a bite out of us. So this creates a, a, a lower stress environment. When your money's not at risk, it's, it's much less stressful. Um, we're reading the current market conditions and we're making decisions on what's coming into the market right now. And we're expecting a reaction from those conditions right now, not five minutes from now, 10 minutes from now, an hour from now, tomorrow, none of that. The, the best information is the information coming in right now. And a, Fast trade like this is the easiest to master because you can focus your intentions on your and your practice sessions on this one very small, very simple trade setup, okay, which is what we do. And we're going to show more of that today. So what we're looking for is a confluence of specific set of events or market conditions. And, and you know, each one of these that you see on this list an entire trading system could be built around each one of these. In fact, many have, many of them have. And, and that's how I learned about most of these is, as I was trying to trade a momentum trading system um, or a, um, uh, uh, an order flow type of a system or a support and resistance type of a system or divergence. And then I decided, well, what if I just looked for all of those things to be happening at the same time? And that's when things started really changing for me. That's when it, it started getting really good. So this is what our setups look like. And this is what you're going to be seeing in the videos or the, the, the live trade setups that I'm going to show you that were, I actually pre-did them in videos so that 
you know, I, I could pick out the best ones and show them to you. So this is what our trades are going to look like, right? We're going to be looking for price channeling. So we're looking for price channeling, right? Price is in a channel here. So uh, we're looking for some particularly small bars when when uh, price is channeling for a breakout of that channel. So the breakout bars you'll notice are a bit bigger than these channeling bars, right? Momentum begins to increase, obviously, and that's these the the bars are turning from black to medium gray to a lighter gray. That's our momentum. And then the bars uh, obviously are much larger. And we're reading every tick that's coming in to each bar. And they start coming in much, much faster than is likely for most retail traders to be able to trade. That's this little white arrow right here. Okay. There is a ton of information inside of each of our indicators. But it looks very simple. Maybe maybe it might look a little complicated because there are a lot of readings that we're taking. But if you think about like a car, when you get into a car, there are lots of gauges, gauges and dials and things and buttons and all kinds of stuff. But in just a short amount of time, you realize the things that are important for you to know at particular times. You don't have to take it all in at once. Okay. So it's very similar to the gauges, the indicators for using a car. The bars become overbought, which is this pink outline. So we see that we are in an overbought condition. And then we get some churning activity in our volume, which is this white, I mean, that little pink peach colored dot here with the number two in it. We're having churning activity here. Okay. Meaning that the volume when this bar started was pretty much a bunch of buyers, bunch of buyers, bunch of buyers. And then as we started getting up in here near this line of resistance, we have sellers sitting up here waiting. And so the buyers will, will buy right into these sellers. And then we get a kind of a churning activity. We get a lot of buying and selling going on up in here. That's a really important, okay? Because we see that the buyers have been really busy, but they're also getting kind of exhausted, maybe looking for areas to take some profits. And the sellers are also are now not exhausted. They're looking to start selling here. So we got the, the tired buyers and the not tired sellers in here fighting with each other. And, and the expectation is if the buyers are tired enough and looking to take some profits, then price is going to drop right there. So then we slam into some major resistance and we test to see how tired those buyers are. Do they have the ability to cross that resistance? Do they have enough strength? So what we're looking for is weakness in a, in a short-term uptrend like this. Or you know, everything I'm talking about here, it goes the it's the exact same logic but in reverse okay so we we sell um, when price is high and we buy when price has dropped hard so uh, it goes both ways so we slam into resistance to see how much strength the the buyers still have and if it if it tests that line and backs off then we can be pretty sure that the the buyers are good and exhausted and then of course we have divergence, which for those of you that aren't familiar with divergence, that's when momentum shifts directions before price does. Yeah. So we, we read divergence and this star, this is our rock star indicator. This is what, what helped change our, our whole trading system for everybody. This, this rock star indicates that we have divergence here and that all these other conditions together combined says that this is a good place to take a trade okay and uh, and we'll be shorting it there all right so if you want to see what that looks like you can see on the other side 
our static superdome which is what we use for trading now i put on a trade on the open price and then i also put on a couple of other trades that if price continued to back up All right so there was the open of the bar and that's where i put my first order but if price open here and then backed up i have for what i do personally because i trade multiples now uh, that being said, I don't recommend that any of you trade multiples until you're ready. But I uh, put on a couple of more orders so that if price, see, in this particular circumstance, price pretty much went open and went straight to target. But when I place an order, I'll put a few more orders on in case price backs up a little bit because we have a really good, really strong probability that all of these indicators are going to have are going to are telling us that price is going to drop here now it doesn't tell us right at the exact number there can still be and i'm going to show you this in some trades that i'm going to show you there can still be some energy left with the buyers here the buyers still may be trying so we're not able to pick it out exactly, but we can get really, really close within a few ticks. So adding these extra orders helps my margin of error in the event that there's a few more ticks left and price wants to come up here because I'm expecting price to drop. So if I can get a fill up in here, that means I get a better fill. In fact, you will hear me say in the trade room sometimes that I get a I got a better fill. And that's what that means. Instead of at the open of the bar, I can get it two ticks, three ticks, four ticks or more better than this entry. OK, and that's this is what we're going to go over. Now, the trades I'm doing that I'm going to show you. Uh, does not I am not putting on multiples this is this is training that I do uh, will be doing uh, that in our training program called our fast forward program and this type of training will be for our our uh, people that are in our pro trader program so I'll go a lot more into that kind of detail for the pro trader program but uh, for you guys you still need to learn the basics and see what we're doing um, and see the basics of what we're doing. Okay. So we, uh, every trade we place, we use a bracket order uh, of uh, five tick targets and seven tick stops. Bracket order means that as soon as my trade is filled, my target and my stop are also placed on the static superdome so that if I hit my target, the other orders get taken down. Okay. And same if it hits my stop. Okay. I only trade for a hard target, and that is because we are expecting that what we've identified is only a pullback from the current trend. We expect the trend to continue. Whether it does or not, we really don't know. If the conditions that got me into the trade change such that I shouldn't even be in that trade anymore, I'm going to get out of that trade by managing my stop. I'm going to start I'm going to start making my stop shorter. I'm not going to just hit the exit button and get out of the trade because the price can still move in your favor. But I'm going to start managing by shortening my stop. And it's always smaller. I never ever increase my stop. I don't use runners and I don't use trailing stops. Now, I'm not saying that once you've mastered this system, you couldn't devise or tune it to suit you and master and, and, uh, and use runners and trailing stops. In fact, there are some people that use our system in the exact reverse and they use it for, if they're trend traders, they use it for scaling. So they've already got runners and stops on and then they use our, our indicators to help them to scale out of a trade. So it can be used that way also. We just don't choose to use it that way. All right, so here's the, the rock star setup, okay? So remember, price is channeling. Bars are relatively small in this channel, okay? Price breaks out of the channel, 
right? Momentum increases. That's these gray to black to, uh, or black to gray to light gray. The bars are getting larger. Ticks coming in very fast. Now, this bar, this is the naked rock star trade, by the way. This is not the rock star. This is a variation. And I'm going to show you a number of these uh, in a few minutes, in a couple of minutes here. Buying and selling volume churns. Now, these are optional, but you've got to have one or the other up here. This is called a naked rock star because there's no resistance here. Remember, we, we had a line here before. Uh, 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 line of resistance. Well, there's no resistance here. So since we don't have resistance, we're going to require the trade to have one of these two, either being overbought or to have what's called our pullback alert. That's this with the dot. One of those two, preferably both, is required for it to be a naked rock star trade and of course we don't need a line of support or resistance but we do need the rock star okay so this is our naked rock star trade setup this is a variation of the rock star that that i showed you a minute ago so another variation is just the speed tick trade setup and this is actually um almost the first pullback trade when i recognize that this speed tick, when it was overbought and slammed into a fresh line of supportive resistance, almost always created a pullback. So we can still trade this. We still trade this trade setup, although we get a lot more rock stars and naked rock stars than we do speed tick trades now. But again, we're channeling, breaks out of the channel, momentum increases, bars become larger. Ticks come in very fast, which is our speed tick indicator. Price becomes overbought, which is this pink outline. So we don't need all these other indicators to, along the bottom of a chart, these oscillators that show us if, if we're getting close to or we've entered into overbought, oversold territory. We try to keep everything right where your eyes are. It's called our heads up display indicators. Bar slams into resistance. This, this bar opens five ticks or less from that resistance, okay? The logic is that uh, we have a seven tick stop, which is on the other side of this line, right? If this was five ticks. So we're hoping that we saw price uh, get rebuffed once at this line. We're hoping that if we enter a trade here and it goes against us, that price will get rebuffed again at this line and eventually drop, okay? So five ticks or less is the point of entry for this uh, for this trade, okay? If it, if it opened down here, there would be no trade, okay? All right, you guys ready to see these uh, live trades? Yeah, Adam, hang in there and we'll show you. I know it's, you think trading is all about money, but Money is just a byproduct of doing your job. Um, if you approach trading like a professional, then just like any other profession. Yeah, these are all from this week, Stephen. Just like any other profession, if you do a good job, then you'll get paid. So if you focus on doing a good job and becoming a professional, and approaching trading like a professional, the money just shows up. So you don't even have to focus on it. And that's one of the things, one of the problems I've noticed with most traders is their focus is on money. Money, unfortunately, makes us all very stupid. We, we make bad decisions, which makes us nervous. All right, so here is a trade. You'll notice on the left side is uh, the static Superdome. This is what we use for trading. Then we have our chart. Now, I'm not looking back or making decisions based on most anything that's happened in the last 30 minutes. My focus is on the current bar 
relative to what's happened just in the in the last few minutes okay so i'm going to just play this real quick and these are trades that were taken this week all of these were taken this week or they were in the trade room this week i may i may or may not have traded them some other people may or may not have traded them so to clarify we we get very fast trade setups so you have to pay very close attention there are times where I may be helping another trader or doing something else, and I may miss a setup that somebody else takes. Or my rules may not allow for a trade that somebody else's rules does. And that's one of the great things about our system is once you've learned it, you can tune it to suit your risk tolerance, okay, with some very slight changes to the rules. So here's here's a trade setup that uh that we took this week this was on monday it looks like you notice that we have a hard push look at the size of this bar we have this bar is oversold because that pink outline and you'll see where i put the trade on and then we just wait and see what's going to happen now again if the conditions that got me into this trade change relatively quickly then i'm going to start to manage my stop i would click here and start pulling my stop up but this is exactly what our trades look like and how long they take for the most part okay this we're we're what 30 seconds into this trade now for us in the trade room this can feel like an eternity because we've all gotten very used to the fact that price will stop and turn very quickly and go in our direction and go to our target, okay? So you can see how we got the trade on here. It put a bracket order. There's our stop at seven ticks. There's our target at five ticks. Okay. So this was on the GC on Monday. Plus five. <laughs> that's just, that's what we do in the trade room. So uh, if you see our uh, typing in here, uh, plus five is just automatic for us. All right. Here's another one. So I'll pause it here and we can look at the conditions. Okay. This was Monday. So what I'm showing you on the, uh, you know, on when we're talking about uh, our trades and I'm showing you uh, how we trade our trade setups, I'm not cherry picking the ideal circumstance. Okay. This is actually what we do. This is why what we're doing here is different than maybe a lot of webinars you go to. I'm showing you exactly what we do in the trade room every day. And it looks just like what I'm showing you. I used to go to webinars all the time and go, man, this guy's, this looks awesome. This is great. I'm going to go to the trade room and I'm going to uh, learn how to do what he's doing because what he's doing is awesome. And, and I get to the trade room and I do a trial or whatever, or maybe I bought some time in the trade room or whatever. And, and I'd watch and I'd go, uh, this doesn't look anything like what he talked about in the webinar. I don't understand any of this. What we do and what I show you is exactly what we do in the trade room all the time. Okay. So we are channeling. We broke out of the channel. We've got momentum, these black bars. We're overbought. That's the pink outline. We've got a speed tick. Remember, nothing happens without a speed tick. So this is actually that last variation that I showed you was the speed tick trade setup. Now, we also talked about where it opens below this line. So we're using this line for resistance, hoping that the resistance is going to push the trade back in our favor. And a lot of times it does. So I just showed you that on that other uh, slide. We, we know, based on the fact that this bar came up, hit this resistance, 
and then pulled back and opened down here. We know that this resistance is being respected. So we're hoping that it's going to help us out on that on that trade. And it and it did. It actually did. All right. So here's another trade that we took on. This is the GC. So look how hard this drop is. Now, what I showed you in the other uh, slides was price channeling and then making a hard move. But price can sometimes come up, make a few sideways, a little bit of sideways, and then straight back down. So now we've got this hard move coming down. So we've got a hard drop here. Notice this hard drop. And again, our black momentum bars. And then, and then we start increasing momentum, and that's when these bars start changing to a lighter color. Now, when you get a hard move like this, and then we get oversold, we can anticipate that the buyers are going to be sitting down here waiting because the sellers are going to become exhausted. We're oversold. We have our speed tick. Remember, nothing happens without the speed tick. We are seeing some support from this line, but the support failed. But we still have an opportunity for a what we call a naked rock star trade. So we're looking to see if this bar opens with a rock star. And it does. And you can see that we placed our trade. Now, when I'm trading, remember I said I'll probably put a few orders down in here in case it backs up. But for this, I did not do that. Just because I would, I just want to show you guys the way that you will most likely be trading and learning our system. And that is with a single contract. Can you have Rockstar without speed tech? No. The rock star and speed tick, the, the rock star will only be generated where there is a speed tick. Okay. On this particular chart, the, uh, the indicators disappear after a few minutes, except the rock stars stay on. I have this chart set to all the indicators disappear after six bars or so. And that's just to keep your focus on what we're talking about here. Okay. How many trades on average would you take each morning and percent of winning trades? Uh, I am going to talk about that in a few minutes, David. But in short, we could take anywhere from zero to 12 trades in a trading session, which is uh, 9 a.m. till noon. We're going to average between five to seven trades per session. Okay. And what's been reported to me and, and my personal winning percentage is right around 80. And I'm going to show you some actual trade room results here after we're done with this, okay? All right. Now, you're going to start to notice. You notice I've got like 18 of these set up for you. You're going to start to notice the same thing over and over and over again. I don't have to show you all 18 because it's the same thing over and over and over again. Which is which is great because you don't have to learn a thousand different things to get comfortable doing this. Basically, once you've done the work and you've practiced and you can see how trade entry is very important. So you have to practice. But the nice thing is that this system has such an edge that we've been exploiting for 13 years. Okay. So we, we've really identified that this has a very strong edge. The flip side to having a system with an edge this strong is that you must execute. You must know when and how to take trades without hesitation. Now, that being said, I have a series of conditions here, right? The conditions are hard, strong push. 
This bar is bigger than these previous bars. Okay, maybe not this one, but it's this is part of the same momentum series. So it's a large bar. It's oversold. And this speed tick, this speed tick tells us that this bar is likely being manipulated because the orders are being processed faster than us little retail traders could, could do that. Okay. So there's, there's a good strong push coming in here. And now because, because of these conditions, you'll notice I've moved my mouse over to the dome and I'm ready because I'm watching. It doesn't happen. I don't make a decision to get ready when I see the rock star. I'm getting ready before that so that when the bar opens and I identify the rock star, then I'm, I'm ready to place that trade. Okay. And you can practice that. That's the thing. You can actually practice over and over and over again and get better at executing trades. Yes, there are require inside the rock star, Anupam, inside the rock star are, are settings for all of the indicators that generate a rock star. So you have the ability to tune each of those indicators to generate rock stars whenever you want to generate them. So if you have your own trading system, and we have a lot of people buy our rock star off our website all the time, and they're using it to enhance their own trading system, you can go in and you can tune the divergence indicators. You can tune the OVOS indicator. You can tune the speed tick. You can tune all of that stuff to suit your needs, all right? So let me show you, you're probably thinking, well, how the heck can he trade so fast? Let me show you this one. So again, it looks exactly the same, right? All of these trades. I'm ready now because I have a speed tick and I have Obos. And we're pushing up towards this line of resistance. So let's watch it some more. And watch my trade on the dome. Okay. Now, just to help make it easier for you. See this? This is the countdown. This, When this hits zero, look for the trade over here. And that's what I'm looking at when I place my trades. I'm looking at a countdown timer. Now watch, okay, so I got a rock star. So I'm going to be shorting it here. Missed it. Trades can leave us behind. I don't get, or we all don't get every single trade set up. Now the beauty is, it worked great, but sometimes it's possible just you just miss it. You get left in the dust. And the worst thing that happens is you just missed it and you're ready for the next one. Let's watch this one. This is a little bit different. This is on the uh, RTY, and this was on Monday also. So you'll notice somebody asked me how many trades. Uh, I picked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven just from Monday. All right. So I'm going to pause it here. Notice I'm getting ready to take a trade. Look at this hard push up. Now, we don't have the momentum bars yet, but we do have a speed tick, okay? So that's telling me, okay, we've got, I'm seeing a hard push up. We're pushing up the high of the day, and I got a speed tick. So I'm, I'm just getting ready 
I don't have a setup yet, but I'm getting ready. Now our momentum bars come in. We got a pullback alert, a ricochet, and a speed tick. And no rock star. So I was ready. Notice how I was ready for a rock star to print here. But this is not a trade setup. Okay. If I had had a line of resistance, it still wouldn't have been because this needs to be overbought to be a speed tick. All right. Let's look at another one here. This was YM on Monday. So you notice how on every bar we're reading every tick and the indicators print as soon as the condition exists. Not, they don't, they don't uh, repaint except for the momentum indicator, which of course you don't know you have momentum until you've achieved momentum. So that's why it goes back and repaints where the momentum started. So price is pushing up. We have a speed tick. Now nothing happens without a speed tick. So now I'm kind of alert to the fact that price is pushing up and the buyers are likely to be getting somewhat exhausted, although maybe not completely. So notice I did not place a trade there. Why did I not place a trade there? I did not place a trade here because, yes, this opened with a rock star. This bar was not overbought or have a pullback alert on it. Right. So it did not qualify for a naked rock star trade. Now, Eric, <clears throat> I want to go back to your question. Your question was, is the rock star always right? And I said, yes, it's always right. So why did I say that when you can see right here that the rock star showed up and price went up? Was the rock star wrong or was it right? Somebody was no well that's it possibly but it's not so much the risk as the conditions exactly thank you very much it's always right because it will always print when the conditions exist where it's supposed to print the markets are going to do what the markets are going to do. There is no right or wrong when it comes to indicators, unless they just don't work the way they're supposed to. They don't give you the information that they claim they give you. So when people tell me that if you ask, does a rock star work or does it always work? What you're really saying is, is there always a reversal when you get a rock star? Or does it always indicate that you could get a winning trade here? This is not a signal generator. Rock, you don't just trade every rock star, sit there and just do nothing and wait for a rock star and then put on a trade and win a bunch of money. Okay, wouldn't it be nice if it was like that? So I can go on. Here's yesterday. Let's just go to yesterday. More of the same thing. You're going to see it over and over and over again. And you guys can learn this. You can practice this. This is something that you can do in your off hours. You don't have to be sitting in front of live data. If, if you've got a job and you want to learn how to do this uh, um, later, 
uh, later in the evenings, while you go to your, your job during the day and you want to practice in the evenings and become a better trader in the evenings, this is exactly what I'm doing here. This is the video that you're seeing here. I'm practicing placing trades on market replay data. And you can do this to get good at trading without having to sit in a trade room or sit watching live data. Here's a loser. I actually put a losing trade on here. See this rock star at the open of this bar, a rock star printed. And then it backed up and it was a losing trade. But I got into this one. I will do back-to-back -back trades, but not on the trade setup. I will absolutely do a, a trade one bar after another if I get two setups for sure. All right, now we're going to watch the open of the next bar. You can watch, again, watch the countdown timer here. That's why it's there. We know about when. You can see I'm getting ready to put the trade on. There's our rock star. See what happens is it jumped. So I was able to get a better fill. And there's our resistance, hoping that it'll push it back in our favor. And it worked exactly like we expect it to, and we hope it will. Okay? The results. Okay? So before I do that, I want to make sure you guys read the disclaimer again. So these results are from experienced traders that I'm about to show you. You're not likely to get these results until you work at this for a, a, you know, a good while. Don't ever trade with real money until you've proven to yourself that the system has an edge and that you have the ability to exploit that edge. This, I'm doing this only for educational purposes. We don't make any promises about what your results will be. Okay, So I'm going to move this over here to the left. So that throughout this, talking about results, you'll, you, you'll have that little reminder there. So here's the data that we collected. This is uh, collected by one of our traders who surprised me with it one day. I didn't even know he was doing this. But he collected all the data from the trade room. And so here's the data that we used to come up with this information here. Okay. So in short, here's all the trades, wins and losses. And here's the percentage of winners overall amongst all these other these setups. Okay. So we're close to 80%. If you traded a single contract and you were able to trade every one of these trades, which you wouldn't have been, but this would have, you would have ended up netting out like $50,000 on a single contract. Now, ideally, you're going to eventually get to a point where you're trading more than a single contract. So this is just to do the math for you to get the idea. This is after all fees and commissions and everything have been removed. That th this can be and is very easily a profitable trading system. The, the thing is, is people are, are thinking that these small targets you can't make any money at, which is funny to me because I've been doing this for 13 years now. And I've been able to make a living on these small targets simply by focusing my efforts on doing something very small and doing it, trying to do it better than anybody else. And I'm going to try to teach you how to do something very small and become the best in the world at it. That's your mission, not to learn more and more and more and more about day trading and, and watching YouTube videos and, and, going to trade rooms and buying different indicators and downloading free indicators and going to um, chat rooms and all this other stuff that, that goes on in trading, which is just collecting more and more information. I stopped doing that many years ago because all of that was just confusing me. I didn't realize it because it's all good information, but it all gets very confusing over time on how to turn all of that into a profitable trading system. So instead, I said, look, I'm going to become like the donut maker, the guy Dunkin Donut, time to make the donuts, you know, you just make the donuts. That's all you do. Just make donuts. 
and you become the best in the world at making donuts. And that's what I decided to do and, and filter out all that other stuff. Okay. So we do have an offer uh, for you guys that expires on the 10th for uh, 20% off anything in our store.